I've been struggling to get my own systems working and actually farming correctly. I've run into some serious setbacks, things that have cost me a lot of time, potentially weeks. And I wanted to bring everyone along this journey that I've been on in the hopes that you don't run into the same problems that I have. I also want to address a few things I keep seeing over and over all over the internet that have really been bothering me. Before I go into that, I want to make one thing clear. Chia is not a source of passive income. There is this idea that Chia is some kind of money printing machine. It isn't. I'll be real with everyone here. I personally don't subscribe to the philosophy of such a thing. I think hard work is always part of the recipe to any type of success. Chia is no different. The barriers for entry to Chia are many. And if you're looking at it like some kind of easy button money generator, I think you'll be pretty disappointed in this. I don't think there is such a thing, and while I recognize that my opinion is going to be wildly unpopular, I think it needs to be said. The reason I started these videos in the first place, by stating, up front, that I am not planning on selling any of my Chia or plots and that I actually believe in it as a technology was sincere. I'm not telling you to keep yours. You do what you want with your plots and your Chia coins, but at this point, I just want to make it clear that this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. I would even go as far as to argue that the most profitable part of Chia will not be the insert a price here for whatever Chia is worth right now, which I don't even really want to speak out loud. It'll be the journey itself. A journey to get to a point where you build and maintain a well-oiled system or a number of systems that can generate enough plots to farm Chia will also mean you journey through an experience that will level up your computer and IT skills quite a bit in one way or another. I don't care if you've been in IT for years as a computer engineer, or if you're an IT architect, you will learn so much from going through the journey itself, and ultimately, I think no value can be placed on that. Sure, you might earn some Chia coins worth some amount of Fed coin along the way, but at the end of the day, I promise you, the knowledge gained, no, earned, will be so much more valuable in your life than any Chia you farm. This might sound philosophical, and if you were hoping for a video telling you how it's going to the moon or how you're going to be rich if you do these five things, just click away now. This isn't that. This is a reality check. I want everyone to know that there is hard work required to get there from here, just like anything else in life. I want to help the community and watch this grow into what I truly believe it could and should still grow into, but I also want to share my own concerns and things I've personally struggled with on my journey that might help you on your journey. So let's get started. I keep seeing this over and over. There's this idea that the builds that I've shared are not capable of the amount of plots I've said they are. I have never posted a video making a claim that I haven't personally observed myself. In my first video on budget builds, I shared a system capable of 40 plots per day. This is what I am literally getting from my own systems right now. Maybe I've perpetuated this by not going into enough details about the how-to for the systems themselves. So to be clear, any system, it doesn't matter what it is, will require enough temporary space to actually get some high number of plots like 40 per day. I say this in almost every video I record, and at this point I feel like a broken record. You can even use slower systems and get great results. For instance, I have a dual E5 2690 Xeon system that is able to get 36 plots per day, which brings me to my next point. Don't overpay for hardware. I am so incredibly disappointed in the people taking advantage of others right now. You go on Amazon and some of the links I've posted have went up 2, 3, or 4x in price since I've posted them. Even worse than that, the machines and the CPUs I've been recommending have went up to prices that I simply cannot believe. Some of the great alternatives to the machines I've been sharing are other precision lineups like the T3600 or T3610. Even the HP Z series is great. I've included a link to a small mom and pop shop in the video description below, which still has good prices on these systems. But the moral of the story is, please don't get ripped off. Look around at prices. Make sure that you're not overpaying for something. Okay, so with that out in the open, I want to share with everyone my own personal struggles and challenges. I know a lot of you are struggling with various things. As I said previously, there's really no easy button when it comes to farming and harvesting chia, at least not right now. 
Sure, you could fire up the GUI and fire up some plots and wait 10 years for some coins, but I don't think any of us really stop there. We all want to optimize, scale, and build. And with NetSpace growing like it is, we probably all felt the same pressure to plot faster or buy more storage. Well, participating in this arms race personally has cost me actual Chia, or at least it probably has. I've ran into three different major issues while trying to harvest and farm Chia, and these issues have resulted in me only actually farming two Chia in total with thousands of plots. A few weeks ago, after troubleshooting my system and talking with some friends over the phone who were relaying their height, I realized I was minutes behind the blockchain. My plots were passing filters, but the challenges I was participating in were sometimes five or 10 minutes behind the blockchain itself. Everything said it was synced, but I started to wonder if it was even possible to win blocks or compete at all if I was so far behind. Ultimately, an update came out that seemed to specifically help people with syncing issues. While I never saw my client having been out of sync, I assumed that was what was happening. So what was the solution or the cause of the problem? I can only assume that it was a Chia client issue or some kind of bug, but I'm not entirely sure. It was incredibly disappointing, however. And a week or so later, I started to notice my plots passing filters were taking more than five seconds. Sometimes things were even taking longer, like 20 or 30 seconds. After spending way too much time tracking down the problem, what I ultimately concluded was that it was due to my 10 gig network. Well, not really the 10 gig network itself. It actually had to do with my choice in HP SAS Expander along with oversubscribing the SAS Expander itself. I was trying to use my farming machine drives as destination directories for my plotters. What was happening was when a plotter was finishing and sending a plot, it would write to the farmer, and I can only assume due to the oversubscription of many plotters writing to a, an array of drives connected to one SAS expander, there was some huge IO weight, which sometimes resulted in 30 second lookups. How did I remedy this? Well, I ended up adding more HBAs and more SAS expanders to make them less oversubscribed. I also used a slow NVMe drive on my farmer to receive the plots and then a quick script that I wrote moves them to their final destination after the file copy completes over the network. And then, almost like clockwork, a week after that, with over 2,000 plots and no Chia, I started looking through my logs to verify there were no other problems. What I ultimately discovered was that my Chia client had yet another problem. It was only competing in about 1.8 challenges out of the six-ish that it should have been competing in per minute. This meant I was participating in less than one-third of all challenges. The first question I asked myself was, how long has this been going on for? Well, longer than I had logs, and I was saving my logs to an Elasticsearch cluster, so they went back weeks. So I started troubleshooting. I started by restarting the client, restarting the computer, uh, I deleted the SQLite databases, I reinstalled the Chia application from scratch, deleted my config, rewrote the config from scratch, and then I found my client behaving like it should have been behaving the entire time, passing around 6.5 filters per minute. So what was the actual problem? I have no idea. I still don't know. I won't call this a bug quite yet because I just don't actually know what was going on. It was incredibly frustrating to realize I had likely gone weeks with over 2,000 plots farming, but not really farming. I had about a 33% chance of an already fraction of a chance to win Chia each day. It was terrible. I was so irritated at this point that I even struggled with continuing on. But then I realized something. I work in IT professionally, and I was struggling, but I was also learning. I realized that the most valuable thing for me personally wasn't the two Chia that I'd earned yet. It was actually the journey. I've learned a lot. It's pushed me to start writing my own solutions to some of these problems, health checks, if you will. And that's what I would like to speak about next. If you asked someone about Chia today and what it needs the most, the answer would probably be pooling. But what I would argue is Chia actually needs better security models, better security practices, security walkthroughs, or safer third-party developer app stores, if you will. What it really needs is vetted applications by the Chia group themselves and or they need to just write this stuff themselves. 
I and you shouldn't be forced to choose between writing a health check for my client myself or using some sketchy third-party developer's solution. It doesn't seem particularly hard to incorporate some of this stuff into the client. The GUI itself, it could look like this even, something really simple, something that helps answer just a few questions. Are you synced? How frequently are you participating in challenges? Are you really farming right now? Which brings me to my final point. This is all new, and I get that. The team is likely working hard to improve and update things, and for all I know, this next update will have these things in it, like health checks. Even if that is true, there's still a huge void in this space in terms of security. There are great videos out there, like this one from Not Another Tech Channel, and I highly encourage you to go check these out, because they could help you troubleshoot your client and verify if you're really farming like I wasn't. But at the end of the day, we, as content creators, are still telling you to go trust some third-party developer who, some of which have already taken advantage of you. If you aren't aware, there was a PowerShell script posted on Reddit and uploaded to some GitHub repo that claimed to help people sync but was really stealing people's chia. While I'm glad I've been overly paranoid about all this stuff, I do still feel really bad for those of you who might have been taken advantage of, and it's to no fault of your own. You've been forced to rely on some of these solutions, as not all of us can or are willing to write our own solutions. Nor do I think we should have to. My final message is to be careful out there. You don't know what you're downloading. Try and vet things before you run them, and hopefully we will be able to center around a few trustworthy developers in the future, instead of relying on somewhat random solutions on GitHub like we are now. So that's it. I know it's a bit somber, but I think this really needs to be said. I'm still farming. I still want to believe in Chia as a crypto, but I'm starting to feel a bit worn down from all of this. I'm going to keep making videos and keep supporting this project, but I will also maintain my own personal integrity and the integrity of this channel along the way. Thank you all for sticking with us and for supporting our channel. It really does mean the world to me. The last few weeks, this YouTube channel has really lifted up my spirits, along with our new Discord which you should all go check out. There's a lot of support in there, and the community that is growing inside the Discord is exactly what I hoped it would be. Helpful people who are looking out for each other. If this sounds like you, please come and join.